Okay, everyone, and welcome back to another Maestro Game production. Welcome back to Beautiful Better, and of course, welcome back to Football Manager 21. Now, as you can see, we're jumping straight into it because we have quite a lot of things to cover in today's episode. We don't want to be standing around doing intros. We want to get cracking on. We've got a lot of things to do. We've got emails to go through, players to sell, players to buy. We've got pre-season, we've got pre-season training camp, lots of stuff to do. And then, of course, kick off the season with the first game of the season. So, first of all, let's go look at our inbox. This is, of course, where we was up to in the previous episode. I've not moved it on because we do have a couple of things in here we need to go over. So first of all, here's the season review. I'm not going to look through that. Feel free to pause if you're interested. Same goes for the season data analyst. There's data. If you're interested in data, then have a look at that. Here is the screen we want. We want the club expectations. We're going to go through that. Here is the squad dynamics. As you can see, we still have no team leaders. Plenty of highly influential players, but no team leaders at the moment, and a few influential players also. Also have the end of season talk, but I'll do this because it's a bit repetitive, so I'll do this off camera. We'll just go over the club vision for now, and then we shall progress forward through the season. So, new season team report. Now, here's an interesting one. Where are, where are our weak spots? So, the squad tends to lack good jumping. We need some players who can jump. Could do with more than just Omar able to play on the left wing back role. Yeah, we could also do with more than just Musin who can play on the right wing back role as well. Um, this isn't the best squad in terms of pace. So we need quicker people, taller people and people who can play on the wings. Got you. So let's get some quick wingers who are tall. No, we're not getting tall quick wingers. We'll get quick wingers, not necessarily tall though. This isn't the best squad in terms of pace. Right, this isn't the best squad in terms of finishing. Yeah. We know that with Regatsu. I think our finishing will improve just on the player alone that we've already brought in. The squad tendency tends to like good heading, yada yada. Okay, I'm not going to read through all these because as you can see, we lack quite a few things. But if you are, of course, interested, feel free to pause or put it on like quarter speed just so you can read what I'm actually scrolling through a little bit easier. But I will go through them all the same. Stamina isn't a collective plus point. Interesting. So we aren't great with our stamina either. That might be why we lack at the end of halves. Well, we seem to drop off. Here is our injury list. Now, who has had the most injuries this season? Who has been skipping games? Uh, players we don't really care about. So our fair choice goalkeeper, Gullier's had five injuries, adding up to three weeks. A twisted knee is his longest spell. We've then got six weeks is the longest, which was Vulcan Iran. Five weeks for Mustafa, don't have an idea who he is. Then we've got Amit, who's had two injuries. Four weeks was his longest. And one injury for Yakin. But same with everything else. There you go. I've scrolled through if you're interested on who's been injured throughout the season. So as you can see, squad end of season break. The Bursa squad have gone on holiday. All the players are gone. It's just me and you here. Enjoying the office. And well... Where are we heading? Well, we are heading to Slovenia for our camp. So, I'm going to go to Slovenia. In fact, we've got choices. We've got choices, ladies and gents. We don't have to go to Slovenia. We can go to Holland. Where in Holland? Does it tell us whereabouts in these places? It doesn't. It just specifies Slovenia. It'd be nice if it told us whereabouts in these places, because some of these, depending on where in the country, would be much better. So, Holland, Switzerland, Austria, Belgium, Slovenia, England, or Italia. Now, weather-wise, I'm thinking probably Italy is the best one out of these. And I would like to go to Italy, personally. If I could choose to go to any of these countries, although I'm already in England, it'd be Italy. So, I guess we'll go to Italy. Italy seems like a nice trip. It would have also been a smart idea maybe to come back to England, maybe give our staff who are English the opportunity to come home for a little bit. But no, we're going to enjoy Italy. Let's go have a nice fun time over in Italy. And well, that is our inbox all cleared up. 
I need to progress into pre-season. I'm going to have a look at some new players. As you can see, our transfer budget is 4.8. No, we're not doing that yet. I've completely forgot. We've still got the overview of our... Yeah, we need to talk about where we plan to finish next season. We've got 10.5 grand in our wage, though. And then once we've had this little talk and I've gone through this team meeting, we shall progress forward. So, as you can see, we are currently club culture, play entertaining football, develop the youth system. Well, we've been developing the youth system quite well. Play defensive, solid. Again, that, them three are just favoured. That one's preferential. So, the one is to be entertaining and the one is to be defensive, but the prefer is to be more entertaining than defensive. Now, counter-attacking is meh on the fence about that. I just like to be defensively solid and ideally play some entertainment football. I prefer to do them the other way around, though. If you play nice, solid, defensive football, then build up a few goals. No point in being entertaining and losing 5-3. So, five-year plan. Work within the wage budget. We always work within the wage budget, although technically we're over the budget at the moment, although it's going to drop below it at the next season. Anyways, end of next season. Repair the club's finances. Well, as you can see from the previous page, 7.4 million in profit, 6.2 million in the bank, I think has repaired... The club's balance quite a bit as you can see from this massive climb up so i think we're doing a good job on repairing the club's finances let's get back down to here now fight bravely against relegation i want to push that up to at least surviving relegation if not maybe even top half if the offer is enough to go from survival to top half then we'll take top half i know it's risky but we're finished 12th there's a couple of games off top half. I think we can do it. So, especially now we're getting rid of our awful striker who scored like six goals in a season. And we'll get in a striker who can hopefully score at least ten goals in a season. So, negotiate. We're going to negotiate. So, first of all, we want to... Ooh, that's new. Play counter-attacking football. No. Remove that. And can we push this up? I want to suggest pushing this up. Um, minimum expectations to be negotiated later. Okay, so we'll do that in the next season, of course. So we shall suggest that. Oh, Jesus, you're obsessed with this counter-attacking football, aren't you? Fine. Well, just Bod, you can have your counter-attacking football. You're probably not going to fire me over not doing counter-attacking football. So you can have it. We don't care. I'm going to do the end of season team meeting we'll see how much they offer us to change this when we get into the new season and i'll see you fine folks over at the probably start of the season or somewhere in pre-season in just a second okay so i thought the next segment might be a little bit further away than it actually was this is the very next day or at least i clicked on a little bit and we are here so as you can see the board has set the initial budget at 92,000 per week and a transfer budget of 6 million. Yes, that's right, 6 whole million. That might actually go pretty far. We've been scraping with half a million, is it, each season? So 6 million is lovely to see. Not quite sure how 52, eh, 52, 92 grand a week is relative to our old budget. We'll have a little look in just a second. And we have a facility down there. Of course, the cutting corners on the facilities in order to give us a wage budget and a transfer budget. Not sure how I feel about that. Due to technological advances, the club's facility no longer ranks where it once did in the world. The training facilities have been affected by these advancements. Now, where does that put our facilities? Because I might request an improved facility if they're really bad. If they're adequate, we'll take adequate. We don't need ridiculously good facilities right now. Facilities are for the future, they're not for the present. Now, as you can see, we've got that 6 million. We retain 20% from transfer rev. I should probably ask for more from the board at some point. And we've got 56, eh, 56, 36 point five grand. I cannot count to save my life, apparently. But it does mean our current spend is within the wage budget of 92 and quite comfortably, in fact. So when we drop down to our committed spend of 55, we're going to have plenty of moolah to spend going forward that does mean in fact we can get some players on like 10 grand a week probably not the best idea considering the highest wage right now is six and a half but if we can get a few more players in on that sort of six and a half 
at four star, five star. That would be lovely. So I'm going to scour the free transfer market, see who is available, see who is running out of contract, etc. And hopefully see you fine folks in just a second when I either decide to get it. In fact, before I disappear, before I disappear, let's have a little look at our facilities. You can join me on this journey as we try and see what our facilities look like. So our facilities stadium is in very good condition, owned by the council. It is, of course, 42,985-seater. Now, paying quite a bit in rent, 127 grand per year, plus 7% of gate receipts. Jesus. Surface, grass slash synthetic. Pitch condition is a perfecto. We then have junior coaching, good academy. Youth recruitment is basic. Excellent youth rec uh, facilities. Training facilities, great. And top on corporate. So we don't need to ask for better facilities. Our facilities are perfectly adequate for what we're using for. So we're going to not let them tinker with our budget for facilities. We'll leave our facilities as they are. And I will go find some players and meet you fine folks in just a second. Okay, so we're back for a little bit of financial update. As you can see, we are not going to face any additional taxes due to our £7.3 million profit in the past year. The club membership fee is also at 207000 in membership fees for the club and our commercial summary as you can see our main kit sponsor previous year was 525,000 it's gone up to 700,000 for this year we then have a three year deal at 1.3 million per year with a new sponsor sponsors in total has gone from 1.59 to 2.36 Corporate and hospitality has gone up from bet 6,170,000 to 85,110. Uh, we then have match day commercial and retail. Now that's up from 120,000 to 186,000. Competition prize money is up to 4.43 million from 121. That's because we get paid per game in this league, providing we get a draw or a win. And then broadcast revenue, of course, is up from 509,000 to 8.76 million. Our main ma merchandise sales, of course, are Mehmet, Emrihan, Erin, Recap, and Sinan. So total merchandise sales for the season were 438,000, with non-domestic sales amounting to 43,800. So the club's total sales, 7,543 shirts, with the following shirt names in particularly well, which we've just gone over. So, new scout budget. As you can see, we're not running a recruitment package at the moment. So, how much is our budget? 154 for the forthcoming season. Um, 154. That's enough to have that. I'd rather have at least Turkey covered, though. I think as a top division team, we should be covering Turkey, so I'll cover the difference. The extra hundred or so thousand, I'll cover the difference from our other budget. It's all good. That's paid for. We then have some scouting to do. Now, this guy, he's 10 to 13. He's a decent player, so I'll keep scouting him, although they don't want to sell. So, I could have just told them to wait on that. And then I'll go through all of these. So, I've already started making moves in the transfer market. I'm not going to unveil them quite yet. I'm going to go back, try and do a few more, and I'll see you fine folks back in just a second. Okay, everyone, so as you can see from the headline, Anal is to be unveiled by Tomlinson. I thought this was a heading that we couldn't miss out on, so I brought you back for this press conference. We are then going to have a look at some Anal. Yes, you heard me right. We are going to look at some Anal, and that will be it for this segment. We shall then move on, but first of all, we have a press conference before we check out our anal adventures. So, okay, let's kick this off with the first question from Zera Uzner of the Bessa Football Latest. Okay. So, you sit here alongside the new signing, Anal Basaran, otherwise known as Anal. We're just going to say Anal. We like Anal. So, are you pleased having got your man? Well, yes. We love a bit of Anal, don't we? So, I am delighted to be able to welcome Anal to the club. In, um, are you confident that Anal can produce when it matters in the big games? Well, Anal will be coming off the bench, ladies and gents, because as you know, we already have 
another striker coming in and yeah we're gonna have mad anal that is right up front we are going to have mad anal or at least mads anal i guess i might just shorten it to mads and anal just for the fun of having mad anal so i have the utmost confidence that anal will come up big for the club when needed yes i like that phrasing how do you think the Bersa squad will react to anal well i'm excited yes i'm excited it's an exciting time and he'll have a positive impact on the whole squad i bet he will it's the sort of deal that lifts everyone's spirits i'm sure it does and encourages positivity mm, bit of team bonding so exciting time positive impact on the whole squad so matches can be won and lost in a single moment such as anal do you believe anal to be someone i know I said something someone who can be the difference between success and fail yeah. that's why we've brought him in he's got that little bit extra that he that we hope make all the difference um he can turn draws into wins and that will do nicely yep we think he can make big changes is there likely to be a change in style no i think anal goes very well into what we already have here so i think that's something that's gonna have to happen no are we looking at ways we can change for the better we're not going to be changing but we're going to tell them we're going to change for the better how does the signing of anal impact on the club short and long-term objectives well he's 22 years of old of old of age even three and a half star four and a half star potential so he's pretty darn good and he's pretty young so is here to bring success from day one his arrival is definitely part of a bigger picture on our strategy so that's made anal very happy i've got very happy anal and that is that so let's go have a look at some anal so anal bashir like we said he's three and a half star four and a half star potential can play on both wings and even a little bit at right attacking mid but we're not going to see him there he's going to be here in this central forward role now we could have him in all these different positions we're going to be using deep line forward because that just goes with our strategy and as you can see he can do that pretty nicely anticipation's down at 10 so is his passing but look at this 12 13 12 10 is also for vision 12 12 12 11 11 14 and 11 on strength so as you can see he's been in turkey he's been in the turkish cup the observant of you will already know where he's from so six appearances two goals one on his xg 6.93 average rating in the turkish cup so far so historically where has he been well he's been at belinka Spiel. yes i probably completely butchered that but he was there for a little while he then went to trabzonspor for 195,000 after scoring seven goals in 27 games in the league below he then went straight out on loan by the looks of it to Bandirmispor, where he got 10 goals in 25 games, 2 assists and 2 player of the matches, 7.09 average rating in the league below. He then went back out on loan in the league below for £750. This time he got 9 goals in 33 games, dropped off a little bit, got 3 assists, 2 player of the matches and 6.91. He is going to be on our subs bench as i've already stated coming in at 1.6 million we did spend big but this guy is valued at 1.8 million four grand a week so we are paying him quite a bit but as you can see he's a squad player and he's a solid squad player because he is the best turkish youngster that i could find so four under 21 caps one under 21 goal in those four caps and he's a solid addition to the team so he's going to help with our foreign player limits and yeah is a solid addition to the squad so that is our anal adventure i'm gonna crack on with some more signings as you can see from our budget i have been doing a little bit of maneuvering i've got quite a few players on the way in so i'll see you fine folks back here in just a second okay everyone it is time to welcome seven new additions to our team yes that is right seven new additions and as you can see we've got twenty one thousand left in the wage budget if we loan in some players as well which is what i plan to do between now and the start of the season heck maybe we'll even find some more people on a free transfer or very cheap 
Anyways, before we get into it, I do have one small confession, and that is our fair signing, Patrick Zubzuk. Now, Patrick Zubzuk, he was 11 to 13, I believe, on his regression. Going forward, I am, of course, aiming for that 12, 13 threshold. But to make things more simple, because he was in the 11 to 13 range, I'm going to use that as a minimum range. Because, unfortunately, because of range, he's only 11 on that. So, Patrick Zubzuk, as you can see, he's only got 11 aggression. It seems a bit silly to roll back or get rid of him because he's only on 11 aggression. So, we're going to stick with 11 to 13 minimum range. So, anything that comes up yellow for me as a minimum range is what I'll go for. I won't go for anything that's 8 to 14. So, I've set myself that limit, but... It's like I said, it seems a little silly to throw him away because he's 11 and not 12 on his aggression. So, as you can see, he's a three and a half star, four and a half star potential goalkeeper. Yes, that is right. 27 years of age, Peruvian goalkeeper, in fact, and he's only valued at £300. Yes, £300. He's an amazing goalkeeper, but he's only valued so lowly. It's weird. He's on 6.75 grand a week, and as you can see, he's amazing. Rushing out is at 9, Vision is only 9, but we're not going to use him as a sweeper keeper because he's better as just a regular old goalkeeper. So, concentration is 9, but everything else is yellow. So, we've got 11 on his aerial ability, 12 on his command, 13, 12. You can read all these if you wish. I'm not going to go through them, but as you can see, he's amazing as a goalkeeper. I don't know why he's only valued at £300. Yes, we did get him on a free transfer. So that might have a little bit to do with his low valuation. But don't worry, that is going to shoot through the roof during this season. I can guarantee it. He's probably going to be worth at least 300 grand by the end of the season. If not a million, two million. Who knows? He had one appearance and conceded one goal. Got a 6.5 rating in his last club in Peru 2021. As you can see, he's not played a whole lot prior to that. He was out on loan, got no games, three games, 20 games in that one. Zero games, one game, zero, zero, zero. So, he's been underutilised, but as you can see, he's a talented individual. And he's going to shine here. Now he's in Turkey. And as you can see, send all players on intensive language course. That is what we plan to do, because a lot of these ain't going to know any Turkish. So, next up is Nicholas Kuhn. Now, Nicholas Kuhn, 22-year-old winger, as you can see valued at 2 million yes 6.5 grand a week here till 2026 star player the 22 year old german with no caps four star four and a half star potential he is 13 on the aggression now as you can see physically he's amazing going forward we are actually switching to double inside forward you'll see in a second when we have another look at our other signing on the wing now he's a seven finishing and everything else is solid. It's just that seven finishing being an inside forward. So we might swap him to just being a winger. But for now, we're going double inside forward. And he's going to be darting inside. Now, where did we acquire him from? Well, we acquired him for 250000 from the one and only FC Bayern. Admittedly, he was playing in Bayern's second team. And, okay, so they moved him up to sell him to us. Interesting. Is that so your second team don't get the money, FC Bayern? crazy absolutely crazy now as you can see he scored nine goals in fed six games six assists and three player of the match he's got a 7.06 average rating prior to that 33 appearances four goals three assists two 6.97 he's been amazing in the third tier of german football so hopefully he can make the step up into the turkish super league and crack on with some goals coming in from that right hand side of course he is actually replacing our top goal scorer, so we need him to come up trumps. Because Recap has, in fact, dropped all the way down to the bench, and he's not even the backup. He is down as the 12th man on the bench. So, Molière is our next player. Yes, Mikel Molière Lassen. He is a right sided wing back. I like it because I can use him as an actual wing back if we need him in the other formation. So, we hired him. He can play wing back. He's going to be starting off here though as a wing back support playing as a defensive left because we're going to start off with the 4 2 3 1 formation that we kicked off the last season with and I think we might use it a bit 
at the end of the prior season two. Five and a half thousand till 2026, valued at 2.5 million. Three and a half star, four, potentially five on his potential. Again, solid all round player. Not going to go through that because there's a lot to go through in today's episode. As you can see, he was in Denmark at AGF for a long time. Managed to get one game a couple of seasons ago, but besides that, they haven't used him. So 1.5 million is pretty good for them, and the fact he's valued a whole million more is very good for us. So he's going to be our starting right back. We then have some more. As you can see, I've also been doing the positions between then and now, just so they're sorted. So another one is Degham Ismail. Ismail, as you can see, again, another player who can play in that wing back position, but we're going to be using him at left back but as a supportive wing back. Yes, I know. A lot of wing back in that sentence. Anyways, valued at 4.1. He's got a lot of caps for Iraq. 61 caps, in fact, three goals, 10 for the under 20s and four goals. Only three rating on his current ability and only three on his potential. But you've got to remember that's relative to our new signings and everyone who's now in the club. Everyone's ratings have dropped down. Omar, for instance, is now a two and a half star. He was previously a three. So, as you can see, all round, solid player. Very good. 8.75, so he should be good for that, but 8.75 grand a week till 2025. He wants to be an important player, so he's probably going to be cemented in the team for a while. Or, more likely, we're going to have the Omar issue. We'll find someone better, drop him down to the bench, and then we're going to have to try and renegotiate what his status is in the club. So, as you can see, he's been in Iraq a while. Prior to that, though, he was at Rizpor. Rizpor he got bought from Al Shotar before he went to Rispo. So he's doing a nice little yo-yo here. He started off in Iraq, went to Turkey, went back to Iraq, and now he's back in Turkey. And well, in his past couple of seasons, 34 appearances, one goal, four assists, six player of the matches, and a 7.27. And prior to that, 34 appearances, zero goals, but seven assists, five player of the matches, and a 7.21. He's been pretty good over in Iraq. So it's nice to get him back here in Turkey and hopefully he'll crack on with a good season. Now, here's a guy I remember from his Hull City days. As you can see, valued at 4.6 million, 10,750 pounds. He's in on quite a bit till 2026. Unfortunately, this does mean Aaron Gullier is going to drop to the bench, but Malinkovic is a solid player. Even at 20 years of age, the Serbian with no caps. Three star, three star potential, but as you can see, he's not going to be playing as an inverted winger. He'll be inside forward. And this is how he lines up as an inside forward. He's got minimum 10s on everything. So, solid addition to the squad. 4.6 million for a free transfer is not a bad valuation. Now, as you can see, Hull City was his prior club. Nine appearances, one assist, 6.83. They didn't utilise him very much. He was out on loan to Vancouver the season prior. And he was at Hull City in League 1 where he played 3 games, 1 goal and a 7.05 in that 2021 season. Prior to that, Hull City bought him in the 18-19 season. So, that was not too bad. He was acquired from Hearts of course. He played there 24 games and got 6 goals. Prior to that, he was at Foggia where he was on loan, didn't do anything. Prior to that, he was in Serie C, where he got 33 appearances, scored 7 goals, and as you can see, quite a bit of history before that. He gets around. He definitely gets around, but we're going to hopefully cement him in our team for the next 4 or so years, and he will be a nice little addition on that wing. Then, we of course have Mad. Mad is the madman we got on a free transfer, of course, at the end of last season. His aggression is through the roof. Three and a half star, three and a half star potential. Can't remember if I went over him. But 5k till 2024. 4 million valuation. Unfortunately, no caps, but the 29-year-old Dane is going to be a solid addition to our team. Playing as a deep line forward on sports, as you can see. Passing and technique are at 10, but everything else is in the yellow. He's an amazing player. And, well, he's been in Denmark a lot. He went to Norway a little bit, went to Germany a little bit. I'm only going to skim over him because I'm pretty sure we had a look at him. But, as you can see, 22 appearances, 10 goals, 6 assists, 7.29 in his previous season. Prior to that, 13 appearances, 6 goals, 3 assists, 1 player of the match, and a 7.29. So, he's been playing 
good. Hopefully he can bring that form to us. Now the final one is Tobias Chirac. He is three and a half star, as you can see here, he's on 10.75. I couldn't find a central midfielder who wasn't on a ridiculous amount of money. We had the option to shift players around. We could have brought Kubelet up in central midfield. He could have played ball winning midfield, got a centre back. We could have dropped um, Mehmet Ozkan back into that ball winning midfielder role, got an attacking mid in Sinan's role. Unfortunately, though, we just couldn't get anyone for either of those who was suitable for a reasonable price. So we ended up with Tobias Chirok. Tobias Chirok, like I said, 10. 10.75 grand a week to 2026 was our best option. 29 year old German, as you can see, he prefers to be a defensive mid, but we're going to use him as a central midfielder. He does like that ball winning midfielder role though, and he is going to be on the defensive. So agility is on 10, but as you can see, everything else is amazing. His bravery is a solid 16. Teamwork 15, work rate 15. He is going to be a beast in that central midfield. Three and a half star, three and a half star potential. So he's probably not going to grow. He's just going to sit there, settle in nicely and just cement that central midfield role. So as you can see, he was in Germany his entire career. We get him on a free transfer again. 4.7 million for a free transfer. Not too shabby. I think in a couple of seasons time, a lot of these players were going to end up selling on and making a few million just from free transfer. So that's nice to see. Anyways, how does the team line up because of that? Well, we have Zubzuk in goal. We have Ismail on left-hand side alongside Kublai and Obla who retain their central defensive positions. Molia Lisson comes on the right-hand side. Kuhn over on the right. We then have Emrehan and Shirok. Emrehan, of course, retaining a central midfield role. And Mehmet shifting forward into this central attacking mid-role. Milinkovic comes on the left-hand side. Hivilsum comes up front. Then our bench consists of Atterbeck. Now, Atterbeck's only there simply because Manfredini is a better goalkeeper, but I will look to get rid of him. He's two and a half star. Atterbeck is also, well, Atterbeck's two star. A little bit behind him, but of course, as you know, Manfredini is an old player. He's 34 years of age, 5.5 .5 grand a week. It'd be better to get him out, get Atterbeck developing, Bring him on occasionally and work with Atberg, who's on a much lower contract. Even though I did give him a new contract, as you can see, Atberg is now happy on a free grand a week backup role because he was pushing for that first team spot. He realised he wasn't getting it. He accepted a new contract and that's nice to see. One player who would make it onto this bench in Umit's position, of course, is Omar. Omar, two and a half star. If I can negotiate his contract for a decent price, he will go back onto the bench and be our backup for Ismail. But right now, he's currently a reserve set to go out. We just want to bring someone in who can play this um, wing back role on the left hand side without wanting too much. The problem with Omar, Omar, he still wants to be a starter, but I was waiting for Ismail to come in. Hopefully now Ismail's in. Omar will accept being a backup and going in as a squad player. So we'll try and negotiate that. But if we can't negotiate that, you'll probably find that he's gone and we've got a replacement. But for now, I put Omit in there just because he's our development player for that spot. And yes, the plan right now is to get rid of him. And if we we'll negotiate a contract, we'll negotiate a contract. Then we have Diara. Diara, it disappointed me. I'm looking to sell. Probably not going to get rid of him, but... I'll try and sell him. We then have Yazin. Now, not very good, but Yazin's decent cover. 27 years of age. Doesn't cost us a whole lot in terms of wage, I believe. One grand a week. Yes, one grand a week. Fringe player can play across the whole defence. That's just your typical sits in as a reserve and covers if we need them. So, Yazik will probably stay there. Canbert, I'm hoping to be our fair choice goalkeeper when we get rid of Manfredini. I might keep Manfredini if he'll take a backup, but I don't think he'll take a backup. And then he'll go out on loan. We have Kaskin. Now Kaskin, again, another backup. Young, developing, as you can see, set for loan if we can get him out for loan. Same with Tazgul. Tazgul's another left back. He is a third choice. Cock is a third choice. Getting a bit old, but still has a bit of development. So I'm not wasting him as a third choice 
so he's okay. Same with Batwan, similar sort of situation. Half decent, can sort of cover, so we're leaving him in. Murat, I want to just get rid of. Murat is completely useless, but he's too old to be in the youth team. As you can see, 21 years of age. He's too, too old for our under-19s. So Murat is set to be released at some point. Unfortunately, he's tied down to a contract till 2024. And then we have Bebek. Bebek is in a similar situation to Batwan. He is 21 years of age. He's got a little bit of development. He's not bad. He's not great. He's just there is some depth in case we need a fair choice. And similar sort of situation with Halit. He's a fair choice, but he does have some growth. So Halit is set to play for the under-19s. He's set for 90 minutes, I believe. So he's playing in the under-19s, but if we need that cover, he's there to rotate into the bench if we need. So that is everyone in our first team right now. I'm going to look to try and pass off some of these players who we don't need. Try and bring in some loan players, maybe bring in some other full-time players for the future. And I'll see you fine folks in just a second. Okay, so I thought the next part would probably when we play our game. But it's not. In fact, we have a new signing both in staff and player as well as a potential sale. I keep getting nagged by Fenerbahce for a particular player and as you'll see, they're offering quite a bit. So, Fenerbahce have made a non-negotiable offer where 525,000. Now, this is the second time they've offered for him. Subject to conditions, this may raise to 750,000. As you can see, he's valued at 175,000 on 200 pound a week. Now, for a uh, percentage of profit, 20% they're offering and they're offering these additional amounts. But you know what, Fenerbahce? If you're willing to keep nagging me, for my backup central midfielder, who as you can see is absolutely amazing, has four star, potentially five star potential, and is two star already, you can go away. It's ours. Hands off. Stay away, Fenerbahce. You are not stealing our 17 year old midfielder. He's going to come off the bench and he is going to be a superstar for us, not you. So, when it comes to transfers, like I said, we do have a new person in. So let's head to the transfer history. As you can see, we've brought in Marcel Schmelzer on a free transfer. Yes, a free transfer. He's 34 years of old. He's an old man. We've brought him in for one season only. As you can see, 2023. 6.5 grand per week. He's free star. Free star potential. A little bit better than Omar. And, well... He's not as quick, as you can see. He struggles in the physical department. What do you expect for a 34-year-old? But he's got enough natural fitness where these should hold up quite well. And his other stats are absolutely amazing. He's a great defender. He's just not quite there on the whole pushing forward as a wing back. So it's a decent backup. We can always go to a nice flat back four if we have to use him. And a solid addition to the squad as you can see he has been on top of the german football pyramid for quite a bit first of all he started off in the north east south for three seasons he then went on a free transfer to brucia dortmund now when he was at brucia dortmund he bounced between the main team and the second team for quite a while then he left for botcham botcham picked him up on a free transfer only last year got him 22 appearances one assist and a 6.94, which is solid in the second tier of German football. He then came on a free transfer to us, where hopefully he'll have a similar sort of level performance. Now, as you can see on the outs, we do have quite a few people going. A lot of loans going out, making money on pretty much all of them, other than Tunke and a free transfer of Bilal Gunny. Bilal Gunny, not very good, as you'll see. Okay, they've got him down as a possible two and a half star potential he wasn't very good he was about one star with that two or three star potential so he's gone to Ankara's under 19s he was in our under 19s but we don't need him we'll let him go we've got much better prospects in our under 19s so letting him go on a free transfer just frees up a little bit of wage budget and allows us to be a bit more financially stable so same with a lot of these as well. Some of these, as you can see, like your Skins, your Cos, Tazgul, they're out on loan, but I can recall them. Some of the other ones, like Papaka and Saka and Asil, 
I think I set them so they can keep them, but certain ones offered me the option to be able to recall them anyway, so I just left that as it was. So that is how that has gone. Now we do have a staff addition. Yes, a legendary goalkeeper has joined our staff. And as you'll see, it's the one, the only Shay Given. Yes, those who know Shay Given, he was Derby's goalkeeping coach prior to us, but he's played for Stoke, Middlesbrough, Aston Villa, Manchester City, Newcastle, Sunderland, Swindon, Swindon, because apparently that doesn't join up, and Blackburn. So quite the goalkeeper, as you can see, 134 caps for Ireland. So not a bad little goalkeeper, not the worst person to be teaching our goalkeepers how to play and well we are going to hopefully head forward as you can see we've been doing pretty well in our friendlies 5-1 and 7-0 respectively now we are playing four teams that are not very good just to boost our morale going into the season but we are playing solid hopefully we can pick up a couple more wins and i'll probably see you back for the course tip game in just a second Okay everyone, so as you can see it is time to select our captain for the upcoming season and of course his vice captain. And well, they are recommending we give it to Adigan. That's not a bad shout. He has been a solid player for us. He's going to be in our starting lineup for a very long time. Same with Sadat Derson. He is of course an upcoming youngster on our bench, probably going to work his way into the first team at some point. But I think our new goalkeeper is probably the best bet. As you can see, he's 14 on leadership, 11 on teamwork. Now, better is Marcel Schmelzer. But Marcel Schmelzer is only here for a season. He's here to develop our younger players, get them better in terms of their mentality and just the way they work. So although he has 18 on team, 12 on leadership, is only here for a season, so there's no point in giving him captaincy or even the vice captaincy. So Zubzuk is getting the captaincy under my leadership, and Mikel Molière Latin, he's got a 12 13 compared to the recommended 11 12 11 12 that both of these had. So it's both better than what our vice cap vice captain, our assistant manager, has been recommended, and he's 21 years of age. He's in our starting lineup, probably going to stay in our starting lineup for a long time. So, both of these sticking in lineup, not a bad idea to give them captaincy and vice captaincy for the upcoming season. So, that is that, and we have yet another loan. I have been continuing to loan out a few of the youngsters. No one particularly important. I'll just pop in there quickly for those interested. As you can see, continued our loan development out at other clubs but we have got one more victory in fact two more victories i believe because i can't remember us playing that one so we're going to head to the ghost tip game hopefully now and get cracking on with our season okay enough messing behind the scenes as you can see it is finally game time and there is some stuff which i would like to keep from this other stuff of course from this tactical meeting i would like to disregard such as changing positive to balanced we're at home against Gostep, who as you know we beat 4-0 at home and drew 0-0 at their place we're staying positive and i think we've improved our team much better than they probably have so we're staying positive on that we're not reducing defensive duties we're not making the four changes that it's suggesting partly because recap is not a starter Mehmet is already playing Volkan is good but he's not good enough to be moving Shrock out the team and Anal is great we all love Anal but Mads is better than Anal so we're keeping Mads in for Anal for now and well we have our opposition instructions this is where I'll take leave and let the assistant help out he can do that so we've sold 21,721 tickets out of 42,985 capacity. That's not very good, but half a stadium is better than no stadium, I suppose. So team selection. As you can see, we have Zubzuk in goal. We have Ismail on the... You know what? I'm going to shorten some of these because some of these are a pain in the backside of how awkward they are. So um, miscellaneous, set nickname. Oh, come on. Are you seriously making it awkward for me? Um, you know, if you're going to make it awkward for me, you are going to be the mailman. So we've got the mailman on the left-hand side. We then have Lassen 
Now, I guess we'll keep Lassen as Lassen, Emrehan, Shrock is easy enough to say, Kuhn. We then have Mehmet, Milinkovic, and you know what? You are mad. You are mad. So, mad, simply just mad. Not going to change it to anything else, just mad. So we've got mad, and then we have, where are you? No. By the way, everyone seems to want Gherkin. Even Goztep, we're trying to get him on loan as a squad player. I took him and shoved him on unavailable for loan because I was sick of that. So, um, why is... Oh, yeah, we have 10 substitutes, don't we? We don't have 11. Uh, 11 or 12, that's because we was on... Uh, what do you call it? A friendly. So, you... Who are we keeping and who are we taking off? Those four are staying. Falcon stay on the bench, you can... St There's no one I want to take off the bench. That's a good thing, but also a bad thing. So, Moosin can stay. Beba can go, because Moosin can cover both this ball-winning midfield and he can cover the right-hand side if we need him to cover that. We then bring Gherkin up. He can... Oh, come on. Recap, I guess, is getting dropped because we only have 11. Anal can come onto the bench in that spot and that covers that. So you're just down as Anal, so we'll stick with Anal. So when we do do some substitutes, it's probably going to be mad for Anal. Mad for Anal. Remember that sentence, ladies and gents. Remember that sentence. So submit team. Okay, we cannot use that team. So maximum of seven foreign players in the playing 11. How many do we currently have in the playing 11? We have three, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we're going to have to drop one of the foreign players. I think that means you, Milinkovic, because you are probably the worst one relative to your next best player. Although, Eren's starting, it don't matter. We can bring Milinkovic on anyways um minimum 21 minimum of one domestic goalkeeper so manfredini is gonna have to get dropped for atterberg and that solves all of it so that is our team so let's have a little run through zubazuk in goal mailman kubale obilor and lassen at the back in central midfield is Shirok and emry han in Attacking mid on the left hand side, we have Eren. Mehmet Ozkan in the centre and Kuhn on the right with Mad up front. Our bench consists of Atbek, Musin, Amet, Seydat, Schmelzer, Volkan, Gurkan, Sinan, a lot of ands I've just noticed, Milkovic, and of course, Anal. So without further ado, let's head on to the pitch and get cracking on with today's game. So as you can see, a lot of players are struggling for match fitness. Well, it is the first game of the season. They're going to have the same issues. As you can see, tactically, it's green across the board. That's amazing. Everyone's loving the tactics. We're loving the opponent instructions. We've got Gullier in for Milinkovic. Oh, he's good in the world. Would be nice if we had that extra foreign player slot, you know, on the starting 11. But we can't have everything we want, can we? So, that is our team. They don't have anyone that I recognise as a danger. So, let's crack on. Let's crack on. We're favourites for a reason. Go out there and make sure they know why. You know what? Exactly. Go out and make sure they know why we're the favourites. Preparation is everything in football these days, and you may feel you know what to expect from Gostep. Can you see them employing any tactical surprises? No, not really. I think they have uh, they have to in order to stand a chance. They're a team that always has the potential to mix it up. Yeah, I think they have to to stand a chance. Most pundits suggest Meritos Khan's performance will be a key factor in determining whether you have a successful season or not. Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. Mehmet is crucial to this team. When he plays well, everyone else does too. So, let's get out onto the pitch. Slowly, we walk onto the pitch. Let's crack on with this season, everyone. Hopefully we can get a good start to it. 
That's not a good start. Gullier is injured. What's the problem, Gullier? Potential foot injury. That's not nice to see. Can we bring Milinkovic on? No. Because of the foreign player rule, we can only keep seven on at a time. So, great. That is a bit of a pain in the backside. Hmm. Can you swap sides for us? Can you go over here and be a winger? Yes, you can go over there and be a winger. That's bad, but good, I guess. So, Gherkin can come on. We'll swap Gherkan. Now, Gherkan, how would you like to play on this? Inside or forward? You can play that quite well. You are dropping off a little bit. I do need to give these some individual training. So, if I remember, I will do some individual training after I've recorded this match. So, we are going to confirm that change. And we are going to pray we get no more injuries. It's weird having the foreign player limit actually affect us now. Now we have quite a few good foreign players in. Kubelier though clears it away only as far as Roko. Roko will hold up the ball nicely. He's trying to get over to this right hand side but his supporting man has cut inside. Sonair now will hold the position up and play it back to the goalkeeper. He's getting hunted by Mad. Mad unfortunately can't intercept it and they are going to pass it back to the goalkeeper once more. This is a very weird tactic. Nice inception by the mailman. Nods it down for Kuhn. Now Shrock. Shrock back to Kublai. Back to Shrock once more. Back to Kublai once more. Now will he play it across to Oblo? He does. Now Oblo. Nice ball up to Gherkin. Gherkin has an overlap if he needs. Plays it back to Emreham though. Emreham with a cross field ball to Kuhn. Kuhn will he whip in a cross? No. He will be tripped. Just outside of the area by Niuk Kup. I think the referee wants to check if it was in the box. But I'm pretty sure it was outside. I'm a mile away. I'm pretty sure that was outside. It should be a free kick. Is it a free kick? Of course. Of course it's a free kick. Silly ref. Quite convincingly. Anyway, Emery Hand whips in. Back post. Shrock can't keep his header down though. Very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. We've had three shots though to their one so far. One on target to one on target. We are... The dominant team in today's game, we have 91% passing. That is lovely to see. We are going to demand more, though. We haven't scored. So we are going to demand more. Come on, lads. We want a little bit more out of you. Obilor, you're on a 6.6. .6. And Lassen, 6.5 is not what we want to see from our new right back. We've had problems with right backs. We don't want you being yet another waste of money on that right-hand side of defense. Our mailman's doing all right on the 6.9, though. Anyways, it is four shots to three at half time, two on targets, they're three, 0 0.36 xg to 0 0.2. Four corners, seven corners, three fouls to five fouls, one yellow card, one yellow card, 89% passing to 87, 51% possession to their 49. So we've had a yellow card six minutes in from Lassen, a 10 minute injury to Erin, and Poco got a yellow card for them on the 26th minute. So we are going to do. Um, no, hands on hips. I'm not happy with your performance out there, lads. Go out there and score. It's quite simple. Go out there, get a goal. We want to see some goals. 50 minutes in, Gherkan cutting in nicely. Plays it over to Kuhn on left-hand side. Will he whip in across? He has the mailman in support if he needs. And he's going to be tripped up once more by Nia Koop. And I think that one is actually a penalty. The ref is going to run over and look at VAR yet again, though. I don't know why, he should just ask me. I told him the first one was a free kick, and it was. This one's a penalty, just accept my word. I know I'm the manager of the team that's getting these, but come on. I can see from a mile away, penalty awarded. Thank you. I could have saved us all of this time. So, Emery Han will step up to take the penalty. I don't know if he's the best man, probably is, but I haven't added any of the new players to the list yet. Doesn't matter, he slots it in the bottom right hand side. Again, kick taking, I will sort that, if I remember, with the individual player training. Because I want to train the players for the positions we know they're going to play. So, we need to mess about with that after the episode. But right now, we are a goal up and we are approaching substitution time. So, let's crack on with said substitution time. As you can see, Obilor not having the greatest of games. Lassen also struggling. Not going to take Obilor. We are going to take Lassen off though. Moosing going to come in on this right hand side. 
That does mean Shrock has to stay on. Adigan is a little bit tired. Now he's having a good game, but he is tired. Same with Kuhn. Kuhn is having a bad game. Well, not a bad game. He's just tired. So Kun is going to come off. Kun can come off for Malinkovic, though, I believe. Yes, he can. So that's nice. See, we can get Malinkovic on that way. And then we can... That's three substitutes. Do we do anal for Mad? Mad is having a bad game. Do we go mad for anal? I think we go mad for anal, ladies and gents. It's time to go mad for anal. We are going mad for anal. So that is that. And then, of course, we have Adigan, who would like to take off for Volcan. He's had a good game. Popped one in the net from a penalty spot. But it's time for Volcan to get his opportunity. Come on. As you all know, Fenerbahce are after him for 750 grand after, like, a year or two but that does mean he is worth something he is a prospect for the future whom we are going to hold on to by giving him some game time make him happy let him play his football renew his contract when we get the opportunity i was going to renew his contract before this game in fact but as part of that he wanted to go out on loan so i just decided to wait wait till he gets a few games and knows that he's actually going to be playing before we renew his contract, so he's not asking for that. Anal on the volley. Unfortunately, can't put it in the net. And we are approaching the 80th minute. 10 minutes away from a win in our opening game. Which would be a lovely way to start the season. 1-0, not the greatest of games, but we'll take a victory. Victories are victories in the end. And we don't care, really, how much we win by. So... As you can see, it's a 1-0 win in the end. Nine shots to their eight. Six on target to their four. 1.55 XG to 0 0.71. 10 corners to nine corners. 10 fouls to 11 fouls. Two yellow cards to one yellow card. 89% passing to their 86. 55% possession to their 45. Now, in addition to the first half, we have Edigan who got that penalty goal, of course. And the mailman got a yellow card eight minutes from time. So let's have a little look at how the players did. Zubzuk got a 7 rating in goals, solid game for him, very good game for the mailman with a 7.4, he picked up the best performer, Kublai with a 7.1, Oblor with a 6.9, Moosin with a 6.5, that's disappointing, Shrock with a 7.2, he did good, Volkan 6.6, .6. again pretty disappointing, Milinkovic did okay with a 6.7, 6.8 for Mehmet, Gerkan again disappointing with a 6.6 .6. and Anal with a 6.7, not the best Anal but pretty decent Anal. So, Molia Lassen got a 6.7. Decent. Adigan had a good game on a 7.1. Aaron, of course, didn't get to play very much, so we can't really judge his performance today. Kun got a 6.9. Good game for him. And Mad, well, we should be pretty mad at Mad because he got a 6.5. Pretty disappointing effort on his part. So, let's head to the dressing room. Tell the lads they did okay. Well done, lads. That was a good win for us. And let's waltz out of here so we have ran into coast gun and coast gun thinks a bit of a collector's item today a goal from emrihan erdogan how pleased were you to see him score that one pretty darn pleased it's absolute miracle now he's been working hard to improve on that part of his game so it's great to see it pay off he scored a penalty don't know why it's that much of a surprise but he scored a penalty so um he says late goal was lucky. Hmm. Questionable. Aaron Gullier twisted ankle four to seven weeks. That is not nice to see. Gotta leave it to the physio. And Zubzuk keeps clean sheet on his debut, which is lovely to see. And Bessa received 246,000, which is going to help our bank balance a lot, of course, for that win. So we're currently at 1.1 million loss. I think we can get that into a profit by the end of the season. We've got 19 grand left of wage budget. Maybe I'll try and bring in someone who's homegrown so we have one less foreign player issue and try and replace Aaron Gullier since he's now out for a few weeks. But I thank you all for watching today's episode. I ho hope you all have a lovely night and goodbye.